like to call the committee meeting to order. Please, Mayor, please rise for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we call upon you this evening asking for your guidance in our decision making. Give us the wisdom to make our judgments based on the best interests of this community and the children we serve. These things we ask in your name. Right. Mr. Egan, will you leave us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Ms. Boche. Mr. Campbell? Here. Mr. Egan? Here. Ms. Jackson? Uh, Ms. Jackson is not with us tonight. Her fifth grader is being inducted at Lacoste Elementary School into the morning, and her eighth grader is at the scheduling expo at the high school. Mm. So she's playing mom tonight. Uh, Ms. Lee Bowman? Ms. Lemoyne? Here. Ms. Dysard? Here. Mr. England? Here. Mr. Long? Here. Mr. Smith is not with us. Mr. Warner? Here. And Ms. White? Here. Okay. Thank you, Ms. White. Uh, I'd like to take a moment of privilege, please, to, um, they had a couple of people that passed away. They had a past board member, Ms. Joanne Suarez, passed away. And uh, then we had a secretary over at um, Shamat that's been with us for a long, long time. I know this lady and the whole family for a long time, but Marietta Roussel. If everybody's familiar with her, she's worked for close to 35, 40 years, close to that time. So if we could just have a moment of silence, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And our condolences go out to those families. Cliff, yeah, Ms. Yes, um, I had the privilege of working with with Ms. Suarez on board. Yeah. And um, she was um, always um, a very pleasant, very um, conservative, very um, caring board member. And um, it was a pleasure working with her. And beside that, she has a family of, I think, six girls. Yeah. And she, so she, she had a handful and raised a beautiful family. And, um, you know, as you said, Mr. England, our condolences go out to the Suarez family. And then Miss Marietta Roussel, I had the pleasure of working along with her okay. too at, when she was secretary at Shumet High and everyone got a kick out of Miss Marietta. She, <laughs> she knew how to run things in the office and she was just a wonderful person and she has a very large family and some of teachers are now with us. And so she um, also has a wonderful legacy. And our, our condolences go out to the Roussel family also. Definitely. They were both great people. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. Thank Dyson. you. Anyone else? And, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Mr. Go Long. Next. Go ahead, Mr. Long. Uh, well, I just wanted to say uh, I also got to know Ms. Suarez and, and her family. Uh, all I can say is she was a very classy lady. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, uh, all my interactions with her, with her was, was very positive. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Campbell? Yes. And I worked with Miss Marietta. Yeah. In fact, her daughter was the secretary of Shaman, Miss Deidre Grover. And my, she had a large family, Mitch, who's a deputy, or Alan. Uh, I taught them all. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, and all of her children and grandchildren have been through our schools, and it's and the whole, I know, the whole school system. Yeah, Ms. Watson, she, yeah. she's a granddaughter, right. So, okay, anybody want to? One anybody more thing. Else? Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, since this is our first meeting after the um, election, I just wanted to thank the voters of seven, uh, District 7 for, um, uh, for voting. Um, Re-electing me, um, I'm very humbled and honored, and I want to thank all of those who um, who supported me. Thank you very much. Very good. Anyone else? Okay, we have a request tonight, and we have to suspend the rules. We have a gentleman by Mr. Warren Saturday um, would like to speak, um, and so we've got to suspend the rules. So do I have a motion that's to suspend those rules? I'll make a motion. Motion second. Long, second by Ms. Dysart. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So be it. Mr. Cerny? 
can you just give your name and then your address and the and, and the rules the way it works, Mr. Sergeant? Like I told you before, is three minutes. Okay. 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 Thank okay. you. Um, my name is Warren Serenay Jr. I'm a retired teacher who worked at Raleigh for about 10 years. I'm current currently working as a substitute teacher at Shellman High School. I'm here to ask the committee to consider a pay raise for substitutes. In the last 10 years or more, there has not been a raise. The cost of living has increased at, at this time. Since the pandemic, there has been a shortage of teachers and substitutes. Today, the subs in San Bernard Parish who are, who are uncertified are working for about $8.49 an hour while certified subs are working for about 10 bucks an hour. Recently, McDonald hired 15-year-old uh, stu uh, students to work at their restaurant for $11 an hour. Recreational workers at the playgrounds here in St. Bernard Parish are, are making $10 an hour. In Jefferson Parish, subs are making from $28 to $58 per day, depending on qualifications. In San Tammany, they are working for $25 to $120 a day, depending on qualifications. SELFS has responsibility for keeping students working at all times, the well-being and safety of students at all times. We have 20 to 30 students sometimes in the classroom. We cannot afford to lose any more subs as it stands now our office personnel has to fill in sometimes when we don't have enough subs. And recently, uh, Mr. Warner and Mr. Munt had to uh, step in and on occasions to sub. Subs are an essential part of the educational program in not only in St. Bernard Parish, but throughout the state of Louisiana. Therefore, I respectfully request that you consider for an increase in substitute pay raise. Thank you. Any questions? At this time, Mr. Serenay, what we're going to do, take it on advisement, and we'll get together with the administration, and we'll discuss it, and we'll get back with you on that. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Nope. So thank you, Mr. Serenay. Anybody? Angie, did anybody else sign up that wanted to speak? No, sir. Does anybody else want to speak? I just want to ask would, you, would you step up to the mic, please, and give your name and your address, please? How you doing, Linda? Okay, and I work five days a week. They need us that bad. We're working five days a week. But when you say get back with us, what do you mean by get back? Tomorrow, next week, a month? Well, no. What it is, we've got to talk with Ms. Foche, but the board's got to get together with her, and then we'll get back to you. Now, Ms. Foche can probably give you some I can, time. I can respond answer if you'd like me to sure. respond. Sure, would you please? We're going through a budget process where we will be looking to revise the budget, and this is one of the items we were going to consider. So we're looking at not only employee pay for this coming year, and we're also going to be looking at substitute pay. So it's nothing that anybody can do throughout this budget process immediately. It would be within the next two to three months as we look at revising our budget. So before the end of the year. Before the end of the I mean, year, um, we would the you we would be school year. You would be hearing from us, yes. Okay. okay. As we go it. through that process. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I hate to have to go get another job that I can make more money right so, now because I, I love what I do and I'm there all the time. Right. And we're you so know, thankful and so for the what the you do. The other subs are there too. Right. Yeah. No, we so appreciate sure. everything that you're doing. But what was your last name, Miss Lane? Falgu. 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 Yes. Okay. Just Thank for the records, that's what we need for. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? If there's nobody else, so we'll just move on. Uh, Education Committee, Ms. White. Thank you. Yes, um, on the agenda 2023 yeah. to 2024 school calendar to present Ms. Mary Lamazzi. Hi, good evening. I have some information for you this evening regarding the employee calendar options for the 2023-2024 school year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I really have to start by thanking Ms. Maggie Roussel. She put a phenomenal committee together. They came up with three really good options for the employees to vote. And as evidence of that, all three options received a good number of votes. Um, option one received 183 votes. Option three received 232 votes. And option two received the most votes with 255. So the votes were spread amongst 
the three options. And what I'd like to do now is explain the options to you and explain your handouts. So you, what you do have is what was given to the employees. The first sheet is written information and some dates and explanation of the three options. The last page for you on your stapled copy breaks down for you by site and by option the total number of votes each option received by site and the totals. That's page three of your stapled copy. And then I'd like to go over the color-coded calendar with you. That's just easier to understand <laughs> the options. I did give the written verbiage, but sometimes it's easier to view it in the calendar style. So if we'll take a look in order, just option one. So with option one, and actually with all three options, the teachers have four days for PD before the school year starts, which is August 1st through August 4th. And the students start the school year on August 7th in all three options. Then all three options, we do have Labor Day, September 4th as a holiday. And the difference across the calendars really are, is shown in um, the fall breaks in October, Christmas, and then also Easter holidays. So for option one, option one had two fall break days, October 9th and 10th. And the three, as we're used to, the three broken out professional development report conference days in October, October 17th, 18th, and 19th, this option had the teachers attending their PD day before report card conference days. That's what's different about this option. Um, then the holiday on November 1st, as we always like to do it after students have um, Halloween, all three options have Thanksgiving, <coughs> holiday the exact same week for a solid <coughs> week of Thanksgiving. This option had a shorter Christmas holiday with Christmas holidays starting on December 31st and extending, of course, through New Year's Day. This option, as all three options, have the Martin Luther King Jr. Observance Day on January 15th. And all three options have the full week for Mardi Gras break in February. And this option differed where it had the day before Easter, Good Friday, and then the week after Easter. And then all three options end with students last day, May 23rd, and records day, May 24th. So the difference then, as you go to option two and three, which option two is the one with the most votes, 255. Option two and three, again, as I said, have, our August is the same, same four PD days, students start on August 7th, Labor Day as a holiday, and when you get to October, the difference is option two had a one day fall break mm -hmm. with report card conference as we did it this year, where the teachers teach in the day, and then the parents have the report card conference night. We always have high school first, and then middle school, and then elementary. Both option two and three have the November 1st PD day, the day after Halloween. So the teachers would come for PD when the students are coming back from Halloween. This, both of these options have a week for Thanksgiving, the full two weeks for Christmas, as well as um, New Year's Day. Both of these options, of course, have Martin Luther King Jr. Observance Day, week for Mardi Gras. The difference here, option two, has the full week before Easter as holiday. So you notice option two had one day fall break and option three has a two day fall break. So that's why it would one day difference in the Easter holiday. So option three is how we had it this year, two days before Easter and the two days following Easter. And then all the calendars end with students last day, May 3rd, May 23rd, and records day, May 24th. So option two did receive the most votes, which is, I'll go back over that one with you. School students start the August 7th, Labor Day holiday, a one day fall break, same report card conference we did this year, teacher PD day and students stay home November 1st, day after um, Halloween, one week for Thanksgiving, two weeks for Christmas plus New Year's Day, uh, Mardi Gras holiday for a week, but Easter a full week before Easter and then school ending on the 23rd of May with records day May 24th. So again, the third page of your stapled handout explains each site and the number of votes each option earned by site. Ms. White. Oh, um, you were finished? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, he has a question. Sean has a question. Okay. Yeah. Um, so really the main difference was was one day between two and three? Yes, sir. The main difference in between two and three is option three had two day fall break and a sense, essentially four days off for Easter, which is the two days before Easter and the two days after, whereas option two had a one day fall break. And instead of that two day fall break, that one day was put on the end for Easter to give a full week before Easter holiday. 
the Good Friday and the week before. Um, the 670 voters, who, who makes that up? What, is that just teachers or is that? All employees. All Transportation, employees? maintenance, all employees. So that's just the ones that voted? Yes, sir. Just we do send the ballots to every school principal or supervisor. Mm -hmm. They're given out to employees and anyone who chooses to vote so, submits a vote. Okay. So it's not representative of all of our employees. Some of them didn't vote. Correct. It's anyone who chose to vote. Yes, sir. Thank you. And, and just, you know, I did put on the third sheet for you that employee voting was from November 2nd through November 10th. Thank you. Be allowed to. Do we have any more? Ms. Dars? Oh, to Joe. Joe. Uh, yes, it was interesting that two and three were so close, but I, um, looks like option two did win out. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to recommend to the full board the adoption of uh, option two for the school calendar. I'll second. Okay. All right. But before we do that, I think Doris had before we vote. Uh, just to put a little bit in context, so. State law requires that we have a certain number of instructional minutes per school year. And we know that is 63,720 minutes. You know, it's based on um, a certain number of 177 days at 360 average minutes. And then we have some, you know, ways as long as those minutes are actually logged as the 63,720. Now, we further have some constraints in our own local calendars because of uh, our high school is on a four by four block. And what we try to do is to complete that first semester before Christmas and then go into the second semester. So it's sort of, it's a college schedule. So when they take their four courses in the fall, we have to have half of those instructional minutes completed prior to Christmas in order to award the credit without us going over into January, which we have found is, you know, better for the, t for the students and the teachers to complete exams and such before um, the Christmas holidays. So with all of that, the ending date as well, we also wish to get as much instructional time in prior to the end of course leave testing. And we look at Memorial Day really as sort of a hard and fast uh, stopping point. Then we begin our summer programs after that. So looking at that, that's why we're starting early, we always start early in August and um, try to complete that entire semester prior to Christmas and that's been our practice for quite a long period of time and that's what we worked through with the employees and the students and, and the parents when we did all of those initial inquiries many you know many years ago so that's the reason these are so close you know you, you can sort of adjust some holidays in this mix but there's not too much adjustment when you're looking at we're going to be starting August 1st we want to end prior to Memorial Day, and we've got to get in the requisite number of instructional minutes, and then especially with our high schools to make sure that we can complete an entire semester prior to the Christmas holidays. Uh, Thank you. Question? John? Ms. Ms. Oche, oh, do we have uh, emergency days built into the calendar? Yes, we do. Okay. We've got- How many do we have? Uh, it's, it runs anywhere from two and a half to four and a half, depending on the schools. So then beyond that point, then we would have to do the makeup time. Okay. So we build those in initially. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else has a question? Diana? Yes, um, I know Maggie was, Roussel was the chairman of the committee. Who else uh, served on this committee? For high school, um, Ms. Sophia Crook was on the committee. Um, Ms. Brooke Royce was on for middle school. Ms. Maggie Roussel was elementary. Ms. Kara Colburn, administrator for middle school, Ms. Katie McNabb for elementary, and um, Ms. Emily Boackle for high school. Okay. Thank you. And quiz um, me there, testing my memory. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good that job. was good. <laughs> Without having it written down. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I want to thank the committee on behalf of the full board. We want to thank the committee for um, their hard work of putting this together. And um, you know, I know Mr. Long asked the question, but every teacher did get. In, uh, support personnel did get 
to vote, correct? The opportunity. If they yes. had if these, they, so if they wanted to vote, sure, they had yes, that opportunity. Good. And I know we usually go with you know the wishes of the the majority. So it looks like option two did win. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Okay. Thank you. We have a motion by Joe Long and uh, seconded by Sean Warner. Okay. Everyone can cast their vote. Motion passes. Nine zero. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ms. White. This is personnel item, uh, personnel changes for November 2022. Uh, Ms. Pritchard's here, Ms. Pritchard? Um, oh, Ms. Pritchard, it? her husband is doing fine, but she had to take him in for medical attention. He had somewhat of an emergency, but everything mm -hmm. is great. They're doing fine, and they're on the way back right now. Mm -hmm. So before you, we have just the personnel changes since our last, um, you know, our last meeting, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. How are we staffed? Um, we are, we still have um, some vacancies for a couple of teaching spots, and what we have done to cover those, many of the teachers are, especially we've got a couple at the high school where they are taking an additional class during their planning period and doing their planning after school and we're compensating them for doing that. So it's, it's primarily two or three open positions at the high school level. And those would be in, in more difficult to staff areas such as math or special education. Special education. Yeah. Okay. And um, at that point we do have though the teachers who are, several teachers who are taking an extra class during their planning periods so that they have certified teachers in there. Any other questions from Ms. Voce? This item has no, uh, we don't have to vote on this issue, so no. we'll just move on. <coughs> okay, Finance Committee, Mr. Lee Bowman. So item number 4.1, revised 2022-2023, general fund and special revenue fund budget projections. Mr. David Fernandez. Okay. In your packets is the uh, first revised budget revision for this fiscal this year, 2022-2023. As you recall, it, the original budget was passed back in May of this year, before the end of the year. And we usually come back in the fall and do a revision to uh, add in encumbrances and fund balances at the end of the year and refine some of our numbers. So that's basically what this is. It's technically, it's basically a technical revision. We went in and we added all the year-end encumbrances into the budget figures to reappropriate them for the new year. And we also uh, added in any reservations in the fund balance at the year end and appropriated those amounts as well. There are four exhibits. <clears throat> the first one is a summary for the general fund of revenues and expenditures and ending fund balance. The second exhibit is a detail of revenues. Uh, the third is a detail of expenditures. And the fourth is the special revenue funds budgets. So in exhibit one, again, it shows basically a summary of total revenue, projected revenues, total projected expenditures, and other financing sources and uses. And uh, we showing total revenues of 85 million, total expenditures of 89 million, other financing sources and uses uh, net positive 1.1 million, and projecting an ending fund balance at the end of 22, 23 of a little more than 20 mil, $21 million. The, change in the main changes in the revenues were we increased sales tax collections a little bit. We're maintaining some of the increased sales taxes that we experienced last year. We looked at the trends since we adopted our last budget. When we adopted the budget in May, we really only had sales tax collections through March at that time. So we got the collections through the rest of the year. We looked at the trends for the first couple of months of this year, and they seem to be maintaining. So we increased those sales tax collections a bit. We also increased interest earnings, 
on our accounts because as I'm sure you are aware, interest rates have gone up the last few months. So we are earning more in interest on our checking and investment accounts. And we made a couple of other adjustments as well for different contributions, a grant. You've heard about the grant we received from the state for to install special education cameras in our self-contained classrooms. We received that money as well, and that has been budgeted. On the expenditure side, as we already stated, we went back and we end, added in all the year-end encumbrances. So those are many of the increases you see. We also increased a few of the areas that we noticed had increased by year end. A little bit in utilities. We added the monies for the special aid cameras into the expenditure side and made a couple of other adjustments to salaries and benefits of the like for additional staff employed after year end and the like. And exhibit four, again, is special revenue funds. <clears throat> And basically, it represents our current balances in our special revenue accounts, which would be our 2022-2023 allocations, as well as any monies carried forward from the previous year. So we re-budgeted those, and we're just representing those to the board as the current uh, budgets for those. And the lunch fund as well, which is on the last page. We went in there and we added in the coverage of the year and then the lunch fund as well to those expenditures. But basically, that's what we're recommending to the board. Be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Anyone have any questions Ready. or comments? Sean? Yes. Well, okay. I have a Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Fernandez. Uh, I see sales tax were up about a million and a half and they were projected. Do you anticipate uh, ad valorem being up as well? Uh, well, as you recall that we were going to take get that decrease in ad valorem taxes because of the cooling the pipeline that closed down. We haven't received the numbers from the assessor yet, the final numbers for the year. There may be a slight increase in ad valorem taxes based on those figures and if they're all we will come back in April and make an adjustment to those amounts but I didn't at this time because we're unsure of, of what the increase would be if any okay and I see uh, interest revenue is up yes well, you gotta add a little jingle to your pocket you know yeah. Thank hopefully you. it stays we may even increase a little more in the spring but uh, yeah if the rates mm -hmm. uh, one last question up. how much was the grant to install the cameras, what, do you know how much? It was was? 80, let's see. I'll give you an exact amount. $83,770. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. You're very welcome. Ms. Dyson. Okay. Thank you. Um, how much was the um, estimate on the cameras to install? Did, does that amount cover? We're getting a quote right now. That was the amount that was uh, determined by the state. What they did was they got an estimate of the classrooms and they determined and it wasn't an actual reimbursement amount. It was an amount they calculated themselves based on the number of classrooms we have. So we had to report that number to the state and then they calculated what they were going to give us? What, that what happened is the legislature appropriated an amount of money which they sent to the Department of Education. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then the Department of Education surveyed all the districts and schools um, in the state to see how many special education classrooms there were where kids were in there more than, you know, 50% of the time. It had to be kids with significant disabilities, those types of rooms. Mm -hmm. So they took the total number of rooms in the state, the allocation which was appropriated by the legislature divided it one into the other and got a per classroom allocation and that was on the assumption that um, you know there would be a camera in each one if it was requested by parents and uh, that amount I forgot if it was 33 or 3800 per classroom and then they multiplied by the number of classrooms he had and they sent us that allocation. Mm -hmm. 
and that is the amount of money that we have to we have to draw from as we install these cameras it can only be for the purchase and the installation you cannot um, spend it on any software upgrades any replacement any maintenance on it nothing it's just to buy and install those are the only uses for those particular funds so the bottom line my question I was trying to get to I guess is did they did we get enough money in the grant to purchase cameras for all of our schools or will, will we have to go into the general budget based on the quote that we received uh, we're still in the process of getting a quote okay. on installation. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully it will cover everything, but it, it depends on how many people request it. Depends on the number but of every requests class, The number of requests okay. in the classroom, so to okay. determine how many we're going to need to have to install. Can we get an update on that after you get those quotes, please? Certainly. Okay. And then the, the grant is a one-time thing just to install, so in future years to In future years, this. unless there is an additional appropriation in the next legislative session um, or additional funds are found anywhere that flow through to us, it will be our local responsibility to maintain it and replace okay. once that money is expended. Okay. Thank you very much. Any more questions from the board? Mr. Long? Uh, Mr. Fernandez, I noticed you made an adjustment in the uh, group insurance uh, for retirees. Um, yes, sir. We made adjustments through group shares throughout the budget because we're expecting a mid year increase in group insurance of 4.5%. So we went through and we increased group insurance in all areas. Is that uh, premium increases? Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. it's, it's premium increases funded by the district. The employer portion. The employer oh, portion. Okay. Of the okay. We've been notified by the Office of Group Benefits to expect a 4.5% increase come January. Okay. So it'll be on both sides, the employer, employee, but we don't know exactly what those will be. So we anticipated that increase in the projections okay, have uh, uh, is there any talk of, uh, of making changes to the MFP this coming oh there's always talk of making changes to the MFP <laughs> um, the big issues on the MFP and and you know how long we've been involved in that and I've been involved in that but um, the hopefully that for the first uh, we've only had one i think per pupil increase in the per pupil amount in the mfp in over a decade uh there are pockets of money for specified areas that there's talk of increasing for example money for dual enrollment career and technical areas um you know people are looking for pay raises dedicated through the mfp which would be at a different level we would also like to see a per pupil increase because if that per pupil increases, that's what helps cover these additional, these additional costs. But that won't be decided. <clears throat> Bessie will have to put together a proposed MFP and get it over to the legislature by March 15th. And then the legislative session in the spring will then consider the MFP Bessie sends over they can either accept it or reject it. They cannot modify it or amend it in any way. So we still have quite a process. Now, prior to that, though, what happens, the governor has to give his executive budget prior to that. So there are always discussions because there has to be an estimate from the Department of Education to the uh, Division of Administration with what they think it will be, what that projection will be. The governor has to incorporate it into his executive budget that must go over, usually around early February. And the Bessie board will not adopt a proposed MFB until March. So all of those little pressures and you know going back and forth, and that'll happen all spring until the legislative session ends so we won't really know for sure <coughs> till june what is going to happen okay. with this right so uh, 
MFP funding won't change at least for the rest of this school year. That's correct. This year it's set. Okay. 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 Thank you. Mr. England. Yes. Thank you. The internet income, you know, because that was a big issue throughout the state, you know, for over a year ago or so, whatever. So it would impact instead of having that one with us right now. Because I know the money, the funds come to the sheriff's department, and the sheriff and divides it up throughout the, uh, yeah. I'm the internet. The internet. Online the sales, tax. sales Online. Oh, the, oh, oh, the sales tax. <laughs> right. Yes. That was uh, part of the increase to the tax. There were two, as we understand it, there were a couple of things that affected the increase. One was the online sales tax collections. And how much are we and, talking about right now? Uh, they haven't given us a breakdown of what was specifically to that. But there was also an increase of sales taxes related to the refineries, which may or may not, they don't have an indication yet on how much of that is going to continue and how much is going to go away. So the internet increase mm -hmm. of the couple of million dollars that our sales taxes went right. up, a part of it is uh, due specifically to internet sales tax collection part of it is due to the refineries but the internet sales tax collection should continue to refineries may or may not we will we, we we see right. on that okay. when they do their turnaround <laughs> in the sales and use taxes mm -hmm. that come through when they're mm -hmm. doing those major right. events then yeah. you get a temporary yeah. increase and you don't know what the sustainability of that is mm -hmm. but the internet the sales taxes and i think a lot of people realize when you when you're ordering oh, online in a lot of times none of those online purchases a few years ago did you have to pay sales tax on right and then as you pointed out the state cracked down on that and passed some legislation and now people are bigger companies now as you pay the sales taxes on purchases through the large companies they've got to charge you individual um, sales taxes that then are remitted back to us so that's a big bump because that was you know recently implemented in the last mm -hmm. year or so and now more and more online companies that do business and sell products to a louisiana resident must then tack on that sales tax that's correct. and keep their records and remit it back to the state and local governmental bodies because with us with the holiday season coming up, a lot of people do online buying. Mm -hmm. You know, I know my wife does. I do <laughs> a lot of online buying. <laughs> as far as that goes. And that's why we monitor the monthly sales tax collections. And so far this year, we've received the first three months of sales taxes, and they seem to have maintained that level. So that's why we're confident that we are going to maintain some, most of this, or a good part of this increase throughout this year. That's why we increased our increased. estimates okay. for sales taxes. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Mr. Warner? Yeah, thank you, Ms. Lee Bowman. I would like to make a motion that we send the revised 2022-2023 General Fund and Special Revenue Fund budget to the board with to our regular meeting with a recommendation. Second. Okay. Second motion by Mr. Long. All in favor? Yes. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I have another question on the LA4. Where's the LA four? The, LA between four? the uh, yeah, with the revised budget. Okay. Why is there such a difference there? What LA four has been funded from a couple of sources in the past. Sometimes it's funded with federal money. Sometimes it's funded with state money. So it'll go back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, it, it you know last year it shifted from state to federal and we're expecting that shift to stay the same. That's why we just, uh, it, it doesn't mean we lost money, it just means we shifted the source of the money from either state to federal or federal to state when you see those changing in LA-4 figures. Now also LA-4 is not funded in the allocation anymore, it is now funded on actual student contact hours. We have to report every month to the state how many student contact hours we had so we really aren't really sure how much we're going to get it every year we don't get a flat <laughs> allocation every year and just draw down on it we get reimbursed based on the number of students that show up to class every day and every month so that's our current estimates and we just shift in it for between those sources of funds based on where we expect those monies to come from 
Yeah, and so, it, it's quite extensive now in the record keeping because for that four year old program, it's the number of contact hours. So if the child is there one day but not there the next day, you don't get funded for the day they're not there. So it's never going to be, it used to be just a direct allocation of so much per child. Now it's <coughs> so much for each child who is attending. And is that the federal funding that's changing or the state funding that's cha changing based on the per hour? It's contact? the grant itself. And the state uh, shifts how they <coughs> fund the grant between federal and state. So it's just the grant terms itself, whether it's state or federal, they fund it the same way. Because okay. it, it seems like probably a difference from what was um, um, estimated to the Right, revised. but re re remember, we just shifted it to the other side. To okay. the federal. It's shifted so, over to special revenue fund. So oh, overall, we have oh, okay. the same That's amount. It it's just okay. shifting <laughs> where we are expecting the monies to come from. Okay. All right. Thank you for that explanation. Any more questions from the board? No. Do I have a motion? Ms. Mr. Warner and Mr. Long, you're going to second it. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and cast your votes, can you please? Motion passes. None zero. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Okay. They're signing the superintendent's notes. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, we just, we had a, a wonderful, I think, um, breakfast on Monday, our day of reflection breakfast. And I just want to thank everybody who was involved in making it such a big success. I think um, our community members were very appreciative and it went off well. The performances were great. You know, the ambiance, the food. It, it takes so many people to make something like that happen. And it ran like clockwork and we got a great, um, you know, great response from our community members and community leaders. So I just want to publicly thank everyone who was involved in it. Uh, many of our schools, in fact, all of our schools will be having their coming up soon, their Christmas or their holiday productions. Um, I know the date for the Shaman High Christmas show is December 1st and 2nd, if y'all want to mark that in your calendars. And many of our elementary and middle schools will be doing their productions as well. You can check it on their websites. They send the newsletters home. And um, I'm sure Mr. Kassar, when he's able to, will be here to give those specific dates to the board. But they are given to the parents, and they're on the websites and the newsletters and such. Uh, I want to remind everybody that Friday will be the last day of school before the, the Thanksgiving holidays. The students will be off next week, but of course our office will be open Monday and Tuesday for everyone who has business here to attend to, and the kids will resume then on Monday, November uh, 28th. And just one last thing, you know, we talked about the um, trying to get teachers and our Grow Your Own programs and all those types of things. So on December 8th, we're having school visits for prospective teachers, you know, teachers who are finishing up at the colleges and universities or teachers who are working elsewhere and want to come take a look at our schools, we're gonna have a little um, function for them and they'll be able to walk through and tour some of our schools and we hope to, and we've done this pretty much every year and we've gotten several candidates out you know, from those meetings. So that's gonna be on December 8th as well. So it'll be pretty busy you know, between now and Christmas with those productions and meetings and such. And tonight, uh, just like when I mentioned with Ms. Jackson, um, because both of her kids are involved. You know, we've got that induction ceremony over at La Casa, and we have many other activities at the high school is that, you know, for the eighth graders and such, a scheduling expo for they and their parents who can come in and take a look at all of the offerings. The children, I, the eighth graders normally do that and when they take a tour of the school and such, but this is also for the parents to come in and see everything and look at the different opportunities that are there at the high school for the student for their students and to make good decisions as they begin to schedule they can actually see it in action even though they're counseled with it at the eighth grade level but this gives the parents a chance to actually 
see where it's going to be, what's going to be involved in it. So they're having it as we speak over at the high school right now. So that's always a really nice event. Okay. Um, I just want to uh, let the board know that it's uh, a superintendent evaluation that's coming due. So in your packet, you have the evaluation. And uh, we need to get that back to Angie by the 29th so we can have the evaluation meeting um, the first week of December. December 6th. 6th. Right. Okay. And yes, no, I just wanted to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. That's all. I just wanted to also um, thank um, Ms. White for her acts of kindness tonight to board members. That was very sweet. Mm -hmm. And also, Ms. Ms. Voce, you mentioned the uh, breakfast. It was, it was spectacular as always, but it just, every year it exceeds the, the last year. So thanks to the administration, all the teachers who were involved and all the students who performed at, um, at the breakfast and served the food and mm -hmm. the cafeteria ladies, ladies who cooked the food. And, you know, it was just a, a, a very wonderful um, um, presentation by, by all. And as you said, uh, I've got so many compliments of, of our school system, of the people who were able to attend and see all the great things that are actually happening in our schools. And, you know, um, to see the performances of the, of the students and see, just see how well-rounded of a program we have. So thank you very much. It takes a lot. Ms. Voce, Ms. Lametta, Penn TV, y'all were great in, um, you know, getting everything together. and. Um, you know, uh, Miss Pritchard. Um, you know, it's just so many people to thank. Oh, so there's thanks. so many people to thank. I, and I just want well to say, coordinated. and I say this every year. I didn't say it to the people at the um, at the event, but you know, Phyllis Dysadu gets all those kids who are the servers. You know, and they walked in so nice, and we, and I make a real point on how fast we can get the food out because the program is long. We want to get everybody their food out and eat. We did it in four minutes. So we served 450 people in four minutes, which I think is extensive. And we had so many of our kids out there, and it just runs like clockwork. And you know, and, and at the risk of leaving people out, um, the uh, Annalise and Ariana Kassar with the chorus of CHS Live, and you had Jason Rusk and Caleb Lambert with our band members and performances and of course you mentioned the men of Penn you know um, doing a lot of the videos Lexi Pritchard who went ahead and was coordinating a lot of that you have Cindy England who is just the master of making everything just look incredible such a creative genius we have with her mm -hmm. so she had her little crew with the setting up of the tables and getting everything to look just exactly wonderful, you know, for the event. And I know I'm going to kick myself because I'm going to leave some people out. And at this point, I'm just trying to think. But I just want to sincerely thank everyone who had uh, anything at all to do with this. And, and our two um, hosts for the evening or for the morning, um, Abigail Coker, who is a wonderful young performer excellent student she did an incredible job and Colby Harrow who he you know held his own he is not as much of a performer he did an incredible job mm -hmm. and that young man is our national is a national merit semifinals he's the one who has done so he had just come when we practiced on that Friday afternoon from the academic games tournament where he had a perfect score in the math game and so the math games and such so he's an incredible academic talent and uh, those two young people represented our school system extremely well um, and are the face of our students within the community. So, and then of course Angie, who is there making all of this happen um, with the seating and the tickets and all those types of things where she runs it all. So it's just an incredible job of everybody working together. And not to even mention the staff at Shelmet High School, who just is so accommodating. And, you know, they are rerouting classes and kids, and everybody there is running around making sure that we're having school at the same time as we're having these big events. And that is the most 
I think, difficult part of the whole production as well. So a shout out to all the teachers and staff and administrators at Shelmet High School who helped make that possible. Okay. Mr. Casal. Uh, right. Yes, and Mr. Casal. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, anyone else from Ms. Voce? Being none, and Mr. Morrell, who did the food. Yeah. So you see, I know I keep leaving people out. <laughs> Mr. Campbell. Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? This means it's on. Thank you and good night.